The pectoralis minor muscle attaches from the coracoid process to the rib three, four, and five. So its attachment is here, deep to the pectoralis major. And then when the pec minor contracts, it will allow the scapula to protract and also it will allow it to depress. If the arm is over the head and you pull the arm down, then pec minor will also downwardly rotate the scapula. Pec minor, underneath it will be the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery as it transfers to the axillary artery to the brachial artery. So if that muscle is particularly tight, you might have a thoracic outlet syndrome of some sort as in you get some altered sensations to the arm. Pec major will attach onto the costal cartilage, the sternum area here, the clavicle, and then is a tendon approximately two inches wide that will go onto the lateral side of the bicipital groove or the intertubercular sulcus here. Its main action is, it's like a bench press motion, horizontal flexion, but then the clavicular fibers are able to flex you to neutral and the sternal fibers are able to extend you to neutral both fibers contract, it will be this horizontal motion. They can also internally rotate the humerus as well. The latissimus dorsi attaches onto the lower six thoracic spine, all the lumbar, all the sacrum, the iliac crest. There's a fascia here called the thoracolumbar fascia. It attaches to the lower three, maybe four ribs, but is a, an attachment onto the inferior angle of the scapula and then the tendon of the latissimus rotates 180 degrees to insert onto the base of the bicipital groove. The muscle, when it contracts, will allow you to extend, normally from a flex position, it will extend you and it will adduct you and it will internally rotate. And because it attaches to the inferior part of the scapula, it can assist in stabilization of the scapula as well. The levator scapulae attaches from the C1, 2, 3, 4 posterior tubercles of the transverse processes and it attaches onto the superior angle of the scapula and also onto the medial border. If you think about it, if we said this is the insertion point, then the shoulder is able to elevate. If this is fixed, then the levator is able to side bend. If the neck is forward, as in you've got a forward head posture, uh, it's been known that if it's gone forward, then the levator is actually going to eccentrically lengthen to hold you in that position. If the shoulder is fully abducted to 180 degrees, then the levator scapulae is able to downwardly rotate, working with the rhomboids and the pectoralis minor. The upper trapezius attaches from the occipital protuberance here. There's a, there's a line called the superior nuchal line. It goes to the ligamentum nuchae from C2 to 7, and the spinous process is all the way down to T12. And the upper fiber is particularly attached to the clavicle, and then the fibers then continue to the spine of the scapula and attach around the border here. So you've got the mid fibers, the lower fibers. The lower fibers will depress. The mid fibers will retract. And the upper fibers, similar to the levator, will elevate the shoulder girdle and also side bend the cervical spine. However, the levator and trapezius work slightly different because when we bring the arm over our head, it incorporates movement of the humeral and the scapula, and they call it scapular humeral rhythm. And for instance, if we abduct the arm to 90 degrees, then it means that the humerus has abducted 60 and the scapula has rotated 30, so it's a two to one ratio. And the upper trapezius is responsible for that, working alongside the lower trapezius and the muscle on the inside of the rib cage here, and that is known as the serratus anterior. And serratus attaches from the first eight or nine ribs, and it goes onto the medial border of the scapula, an inferior angle, and it will protract you, and it will rotate the scapula in an upward direction for when you lift your arms over your head.